As usual, we are starting off with our gold daily chart. And we can see that today basically is an inside bar. Um, and we also had a little pull off on the volume today. So we had our volume up, volume support of the 20 moving average, a little volume. And as we get a little indecision, our volume dropped off a little bit, but our buying volume is still in control. We can see on the one hour time frame that um, our point of control is 1771. And we can see this little range that we're in. Yesterday we told you uh, if we can get a little bit higher, we could go retest 1875. Well, we didn't. Instead, we put in a volume resistance here at 1818. There's our accumulation of volume. And then now we're putting a little support in here at 1786. So we got sort of a 30 point range here of where volume is showing us it wants to go. Of course, we're oversold a little bit, just out of oversold on RSI. So we could head back up. But right now, we've got an inside bar. And so what we could do is, again, mark the high and the low today and watch for a break, preferably in the trend. So we would love to see a break to the upside. So a weak gold means what to our dollar currency pairs going to the pound dollar. And we can see what? As the price moved up, it stopped where? At our previous resistance line. And what do we say? Just like we needed volume to get through it here, we're going to need volume once again to get through it. And also, we're still within our daily channel uptrend here. So we've got two things against us. We've got horizontal resistance. And we've got resistance moving up a little bit higher. So we went right up to it. Sellers found value and they pushed price back down. On our one hour time frame, we're right now sitting at the neutral time frame. And we're just below our long term moving average. And ever so slightly, we can see that the pound is in control. The pound took a nice spike up towards the end of the day. Meanwhile, the dollar after uh, trending down a little bit moved up, but not as strong as the pound, which is what is allowing the pound to be in control. So that kind of says sit on hands because we're in neutral, we're just below long term moving average, and we're trying to decide what we're going to do with this resistance on the daily chart. As far as the euro dollar, we can see the same thing here on the daily that our long term resistance of 1.455 held up, we pushed up to it, and the seller said, hmm, value, and they pushed price back down. Here, we can see that we're in a selling zone, we're, uh, and we're well above our long-term moving average. That supports what we're seeing on our daily. Our, our seller is finding value at 1.45, trying to push price down, basically, maybe to our moving averages. So... We're in a sell zone. We're above our long-term moving average. However, the euro is in control. Now, they're starting to converge. So if the dollar takes control, we'll see price action start to move down. But as long as the euro is in control, price action will continue to move higher. And we can see that spike up above our long-term moving average on the, the euro. Meanwhile, the dollar kind of bounced here at the and found resistance at its long-term moving average. So as long as the euros are control, we move higher. But as long as they see how they're kind of moving parallel, that's why you have sideways action. When they diverge, that's when we see the big price action. Finally, we have the dollar franc. And here, we broke into our new range. We said what's going to happen. Yesterday, we talked about that. Getting above the 50 moving average, getting into our new price channel. Uh, 0 0.8078 up to 0 0.8318 and so we'll see the dollar certainly has been making a move but clearly on a one hour time frame we're in a sell zone we're above a long term moving average but the dollar remains in control and as long as the dollar remains in control price will move higher and you can see the uh, franc kind of taking towards the end and the dollar moving up a little bit so as long as the dollar is in control price action will move higher even though we're in a sell zone and well above our long-term moving average. As we come to our watch list for our low volatility watch list, which is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands at the default setting of two standard deviation, we're going to be watching the Euro dollar, the Pound dollar, and the Dollar Franc. Now these aren't set up perfectly, but they appear to be setting up. And again, our goal here is to watch the high and low of the bands and watch for a break, preferably in the direction of the trend. 
For our Inside Bar watch list, we're watching the high and low of today's range, comparing it to yesterday. And the only candidate for an Inside Bar is the dollar yen. So as we move to our education portion of our video, we've been talking about hesitation and the inability to pull the trigger. And basically, to be blunt about it, the inability to enter a trade shows a lack of discipline to follow a system. So the question is, have you back-tested your system? Have you shown positive expectancy to where you can expect the trades to work out? And if you know that, and if you know your system works, then why can't you pull the trigger? Sure, there's going to be losses, and we all have to deal with those losses. But in the end, your first job as a trader is to find a system that you can afford to trade, that you can deal with the risk, the heat, and then finally that you can trade uh, confidently day after day after day. Too often people skip all of that and go directly to trading and then therefore they let their emotions take control. However, if you take the time to find a system, nurture that system, manipulate and convert that system to match who you are as a trader, but then now we're just talking about a lack of discipline. You know what the system is, you're just not following it. As always, you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our free five video course where we offer five videos on how to develop your own high probability trading setups. That should give you a gauge into how we are as coaches and how we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop that trader's mindset so that you can pull the trigger on the trade. Make sure that you do have a trading plan that matches who you are as a trader. Why not get paid to trade? Rebates for your Forex trading. It doesn't change the conditions or spreads. It's just rebates for your trades. And finally, if you want to get signals, automated Forex signals can be provided for you to be traded automatically, or you can get the signals to trade yourself. Tons of providers. You can find the ones that match who you are as a trader, which, again, we've said time and time again is important. Nothing like following someone who does a 400 pip stop when you can only afford 40. But in the end, the ability to pull the trigger, the ability to be a successful trader is all about developing a trader's mindset. It's not the indicator, it's not the system, it's not the trading room. It's your ability to follow a system with discipline, lack of uh, focus and discipline, and control of your emotions day after day after day. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.